Welcome to the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, where it's all about helping your veterinary practice attract, engage, and retain clients. Broadcasting a new podcast every Monday from sunny Southern California, here's your host, Brandon Bashirs. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 154 of the Veterinary Marketing Podcast. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we are going to be talking about how to market your practice or your personal brand for the purposes of hiring. I think this is a fantastic topic to discuss because I know how many practices are struggling with hiring vets and finding vets. And on the other side of that coin, vets that are trying to figure out their personal branding, techs that are trying to figure out their personal branding. So today we have a very cool guest. We have Jesse Thomason, who has over six and a half years of experience, or actually six and a half years of experience. He works for a company called Vetted Pet. He's got some really great insights. So we're going to be talking to him here in just a minute. Before we begin, a few things. First, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe in iTunes or Google Play or Spotify or wherever you get your podcast. And if you could do me a huge favor, please leave an honest review. If you haven't done so already, be sure to join the Veterinary Marketing Nerds Facebook group. If you go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the Veterinary Marketing Nerds, no space in between. That's where you can get to apply to join the veterinary marketing nerds. I just have you answer a few questions, make sure you're in the veterinary industry so that we don't have spammers. But this is a group that can, you can get uh, collaboration and help and support related to marketing your veterinary practice. So if you're looking for more help or if you want more insight on how to market your practice, that's a great spot to go. Be sure that you join there. All right, so let's talk about hiring today. Hiring is one of the hot topics in the industry. Obviously, if you are having trouble hiring a vet, this is going to be a great episode for you. I think that Jesse really helps to convey a lot of value on what is important, especially in him talking to potential hires all the time. Um, So since it's, it's really cool, too, because he has a good experience not only in the veterinary industry, but he's had other experiences in other industries that he brings over to, again, his past six and a half years of working solely with veterinary practice individuals. So um, I think this is going to be a great episode full of insights. And uh, if you have any questions, be sure to uh, reach out. Let me know if you have anything that you need help with. And without further ado, here's Jesse Thomason. Hello. Hey, Jesse, can you hear me? I can. How's it going? Good. Good. So this week, we have Jesse Thomason on the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us, Jesse. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the veterinary industry? Um, thanks for having me on. I, um, I'm a recruiter. I've been doing this for about 16 years now for different industries. And um, kind of a strange, well, I'm a very natural progression into the veterinary industry. I, I recruited pharmacists for a while. I've uh, recruited engineers and uh, people in the creative industry. So I've kind of been all over the place. And um, rather than being an expert in obviously any one of those industries, I'm not a doctor. I will, you know, I'm just an expert in the process and making sure that people have a positive hiring process and have a good experience, you know, whether they're hired or not, that's part of of the whole process. So, uh, but I got into the veterinary industry um, just by actually taking a contract position um, for a short period of time at Banfield. And uh, I was there for a few years um, and was hired on full time. Very cool. So it just sort of, uh, you know, had to learn it quickly, <laughs> which is one thing that recruiters do if there are any out there listening. To me. Definitely. So your background is in HR and recruiting, which are like super valuable skill sets for the veterinary industry. And actually me and you, we met each other through a comment section in one of Gary V's videos that he posted on LinkedIn, which is super interesting. So um, that, that's kind of cool. So you, obviously you follow Gary Vaynerchuk. He's an amazing right. marketer and you just kind of mentioned some of your stories specifically and it was just really awesome. And so that's how me and you uh, met and that's kind of cool. Yeah. And, and you know, I don't, I don't mind talking about it. It's not actually something I talk about really a lot or ever, but some, for some reason, that particular quote or comment that he made that day was, you know, who's ready to basically get after it on a Monday. I was really appreciating my life because I, you know, didn't have a great 
you know, childhood or teenage years that I you know, dropped out of school and was in a you know pretty rough position for a long time. I wasn't sure if I was going to, you know, make it and really, you know, knuckle down and kind of worked my way into the human resources HR field. And, uh, and I was just having a moment where I was very happy about, you know, the success that I have had and ready to get to work and, and continue. So I was just commenting about some of the things that I, you know, been through and overcome. And uh, I got a lot of responses to it, actually, which I didn't necessarily expect. But, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it was, yeah, that's how we cool. yeah, very cool. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. And um, so I think that your background is super, super interesting. And anybody who has a practice, well, I, I shouldn't say anybody. I think that a lot of practices are facing trouble uh, acquiring new vet talent. I'm not sure. That's right. the biggest complaint that I hear. Um, I'm not yeah. sure about like tech talent. I definitely know specialty talent is super hard to come by for practices. Yeah. And so, um I just think it's super interesting as far as like compared to other industries that you've worked in and you have a great amount of experience, which is super interesting. How do you, what, what's kind of the current climate right now that you're seeing um, in, in the hiring space specifically? The reality is that, that everybody needs vets. Um, you know, if I call someone to recruit uh, a vet, they oftentimes will tell me that they're actually looking to hire and if I can find anyone for them, that would be helpful. So I mean, that's literally it. There's, uh, there are a lot of things happening in the veterinary industry that I think need to change, um, you know, to make it more sustainable for everybody's practice, uh, for one thing. But as far as the hiring piece of it goes, um, there is no magic wand. You really have to create a fantastic environment. Um, I think that that's really the key is you've got to be that place that people want to work. Um, you've got to really you know, um, have that structure and, and have things together and, and, and have a good team. And that's, that's obviously a big part of it as well as have great staff that are well-trained and work with their doctors. Definitely. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I, I think that there's a lot of directions that our conversation could go. Um, but you know, specifically we're, t- we're talking about marketing here today a lot. And so I think that like what you just said makes total sense to me. And I never really thought about it in a way that like the job is the product that you're selling here basically. And so, um, you know, if like, that's one, one thing that I say with marketing all the time, if you have a terrible product or service, marketing will not fix it. Right. Um, and so I'm sure you acquire those kind of customers who are like, Hey, I need a vet, hire me a vet, which is basically the same thing as saying to a marketer, Hey, I need sales, sell my crappy product. And if the product is, you know, <laughs> right. it just magnifies the problem. Um, and right. so what kind that's, of, I'm what, sorry. I was going to say, that's one thing that I, that I tell everybody is, you know, just as far as recruiting, I, I don't want to recruit for, for anyone that I don't think is creating that, that kind of environment or that isn't really a great place to go to work. You know, when you're saying, when you're the guy saying, Hey, jump in the water's fine you really want to make sure that that's the case. So totally. uh, as a recruiter, it's great to really make sure that you are, you know, really able to provide those type of opportunities that you're talking about. Definitely. So that's a big part of it. Yeah. So what, in, in your opinion, if you had a, a kind of client that you could say would be an ideal client to help recruit for, what do their kind of digital footprints look like as far as like, what are some of the best things that a practice can be doing, then I guess should we, we should preface that by saying how important is it for the, the practice to be creating content that's not just consumer facing, facing, but also like potential higher facing. Right. And I'll try to keep bringing this back to the marketing side because <laughs> sure. I know that that's where we're at. Um, but then that's a great question. I think um, if you can create flexibility for people these days, that's going to be huge. If you're able to create a flexible schedule in some way, uh, if you're able to allow for <clears throat> some of the things that happen in people's lives, uh, you know, I think the reality is that this industry is between 60 to 80 percent female. And there are single mothers out there that are great vets that need and techs as well. Um, that need to work and need to have some flexibility. Um, the industry hasn't traditionally provided for that as much as I think it could. And, and 
that it's starting to. So that's, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, that totally makes sense too. So, um, that's one thing. I mean, that's, that's, that's one thing is just that flexibility. Yeah, definitely. That, that definitely makes sense. Um, with, you know, like, let's say, so uh, do you work primarily with larger corporations like the Banfields and those? Well, I, I, I work, uh, I have, I work for one company, so. Gotcha. So, and, and, you know, and we can talk about that. I didn't come in here necessarily to, to pitch. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I, but, but I absolutely will. I work for a company called Medded Pet Care and we're doing in-home pet care. Okay, cool. Actually sending vets and techs out to people's homes um, it's really kind of the future, um, which I, for me, I think it's interesting because, you know, most vets have read the whole All Creatures Great and Small series, and, and I have to, um, and we're using technology to kind of bring the veterinary industry back to where we can basically build, and the vets that, that, that work with us can build small communities of people that want their services at home, and uh, and we go and do that, so... So uh, any vets that want to work for us, definitely contact me. <laughs> definitely. Well, we'll tell everybody how to get in touch with you for sure. So um, but yeah, very cool. So with, with that and your, your guys' attraction, you know, trying to attract the right people to your practice and, and the right culture fits and things, how, how important is, I mean, well, do you see, so I'll, I'll give you some examples. Like I have a, a friend named Cody Creelman, who's a cow vet. I don't know if you ever watched some of his videos, but he creates videos about vlogging for being a large animal vet. And right. um, through his content, he gets like every single day vets that are grads that are saying, Hey, how do I work with you in your practice all the time? Cause like yeah. they're, they're able to see like what it's like to be behind the scenes, basically. Um, you know, are you seeing, especially for, for practices that like to maintain more of a corporate, um, you know, marketing face and, and brand presence, which makes sure. sense. Right. Sure. Um, how do you see the importance of like, you know, displaying culture in your marketing and right. making sure that people will understand that it's a good fit? Or do you see that that is important in general? It's super important. And it's funny because, you know, just before getting on this podcast, I'm thinking to myself, you know, how do I want to come across <laughs> and you worry about all that stuff, but the reality is you just have to be authentic. And uh, especially when it comes to the type of content that people are creating today and the type of content that people are responding to. Um, I think if you hire a veterinarian who is, you know, maybe really tech savvy and, and likes to create content, um, don't hinder them from putting it out there. You know, if you have a practice and somebody wants to make videos and put them out there, um, you know, maybe do a bit of editing um, or, or just review, but allow that. I think that's uh, something that'll help you a lot. And I think a lot of people do worry about that. And it's good to worry about your image. It's good to have sort of an editing finger on that. But I think creating the content is big. And that's honestly, I'm on the, the edge of that myself. I, I haven't created a ton of content, but I'm realizing the value of it with everybody else. It's, you know, and we're talking about it as a company ourselves and creating more and more content. We have a lot out there. We're starting to do more. Um, and video is the direction that we're going to be going, I think, and that everybody is going. So totally, I think it's, uh, you know, just, just make them and put them out there like everybody's doing. Um, one thing that I don't want to see that I kind of laugh about myself and I see a lot of people creating content about creating content <clears throat> and that makes me laugh um, so I, I want to see I want to see content that's that's actually really valuable and has a lot in it or you know tell me about the jobs that you offer or tell me about your skill set or tell me about what you can do um, but I'm seeing a lot of people creating videos about creating videos that's... which we need to get that message out there I think it's good to get the message out there that you need to make content but um, let's make sure that it's content that, that is full of content. <laughs> I totally agree. Does um, that make any sense at all? Yeah. So, like, give give an example of what you mean. I think I think I know exactly what you mean. But um, I just see a lot of uh, a lot of videos on LinkedIn these days of people making a video about making videos on LinkedIn. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, everybody's talking about. I agree. That that's a big thing. Of hey, I'm editing my content right now and it's like they talk about that and so i totally right. get, 
Well, that's why I appreciate that you have a podcast on marketing the veterinary industry. Yeah, totally. So, so that that's some good, really, really good points. With uh, <laughs> I laugh about it myself. But. Yes, definitely. So um, I think that there's you know two sides to so attracting the right vets, um, especially. Right. Is, is very, very difficult. They have pra- smaller practices that are not in like metro areas specifically, right? So like, you know, areas that I talk to that are probably the hardest to get. I'm thinking of a, a practice that's a beautiful practice. It's in a more rural town. And again, it's not like tiny, tiny town, but it's, it's definitely not like, you know, LA or Portland or San Diego. And so they're just having such a hard time bringing vets to these these smaller towns Um, and it it kind of makes sense you know especially if you're just graduating you're trying to get stuff figured out you don't necessarily want to go to a a smaller town necessarily with with that kind of a problem I think that that's probably one of the most difficult I mean I know practices have been trying to hire for years and years yeah Um, Yeah. so what is kind of your do you have a a way to bridge that or how, how much do you think you can sell your practice, like as far as, is there any tri- tips or tricks that you have for people that are kind of in those situations? Yeah, I mean, I guess you could call them tips or tricks. And it's just things that you've got to make sure that you're doing. Um, really, the the avenues that you have to advertise open positions as a veterinary practice are fairly limited. Uh, you know, you've got to make sure that you're advertising on the AVMA site. You've got to make sure that you're, you know, reaching out and contacting any of the other, you know, maybe DVM 360, uh, you know, there's, there's a number of, a small number of, of places where you can go, um, but advertising there, advertising on Indeed and, and, you know, doing the basic things, but then also getting out there, you've really got a network. You've got to contact people. You've got to make phone calls to people that, you know, you've got to offer referral bonuses, you know, let people know that you'll pay for them to help you spread the word. Um, and, you know, start getting out there and sending out the messages. But then as far as using social media, that's another big piece of it. Um, If you know people that belong to groups, Facebook groups, for example, um, and they know that you're hiring, if they're willing to share that, that's really helpful. Uh, Also, because you can't, you know, just bully your way into somebody's Facebook group. Totally. Um, Nor should you. (laughs) But if you know people, I mean, that's really where it starts. I, I always think about that six degrees of separation movie and Mm -hmm. really kind of how recruiting works as well um if you know five people that you can talk to that are qualified for the job in an area and ask them to talk to five people maybe they'll talk to two people (laughs) or one if you're lucky um but it's just a matter of really continuously getting the word out there there are some positions that it just seems like you can never fill uh, especially with the way that things are right now with the veterinary industry there's there's a finite number of of graduates coming out and there are a lot of positions you know for them to take um and they do and they you know they're it's it's just very tough right now especially if you're in a rural area and i spend a lot of time trying to recruit vets in rural areas and it um you know you've got to you know get creative look for things like is there great fishing in the area and then maybe do searches to find out which vets in that part of the world (laughs) you know maybe love fishing find somebody that that loves fishing and you know, they grew up in that part of Arkansas or something like that. And yeah, I mean, I had a similar situation to that where that was how we found somebody who was interested. That's amazing. I mean, ultimately they didn't take the position, but <laughs> <laughs> that's really interesting. But they thought about it. Yeah. Um, with like so, the level of detail that you can get with ad targeting now, if you wanted to, post. Right. unfortunately though, Facebook is getting, you know, really cracking down on any kind of job posting that has any kind of demographic choices because they're, they're worrying about, I mean, they just got sued by uh, housing and urban development for um, real estate discrimination. So I yeah. suspect that they're going to have a, a job discrimination lawsuit following shortly. Right. If they have, well, which and that kind of leads me into, what you and I have talked about before um, via instant messaging is again, going back to authenticity, um, making sure, you know, if you're trying to build a practice and you're trying to hire, um, making sure that you've got good word of mouth. It's amazing how important positive word of mouth is and, and peer opinion. 
definitely. You've, you've got to have that. And that's one of the things that I look for, you know, when I join a company is what do people say about working here? <laughs> and, um, you know, because I want, I want, I want that type of thing to continue as the company grows. And so um, that's really important. And, you know, once that turns around um, and you start getting people that are, are not happy and, and they're not sharing positive experiences with their their peers, it can become much more difficult to recruit. Yep. So, um, but you know, one of the unfortunate things also is that uh, a lot of the places where people have to go online for opinions, for example, like Glassdoor, for example, um, the reality is that people don't go to Glassdoor to say, hey, I just got this great new job and I love it. People tend to go to Glassdoor uh, to sort of vent. Yeah, just like so I think that's the reality. Um, not to disparage Glassdoor, I think they're great, but the important thing is people have to leave positive messages on there, and, and I think that's just human nature. People don't do that. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Well, so let's let's talk really quick here about kind of like the other side. So we have the the vet practice side, which is starving, and then on the other side we have the vet student side, which. Mm-hmm. Um, do they typically, so you're, you're out there talking to vet students all the day. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. And also new grads and people that are looking for work. Right. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're the hot commodity right now that everybody's searching for is the sense that they know that they have lots of options these days. Um, some of them know, um, some of them don't, you know, I think that at that point in their, you know, just in their lives, some of them maybe haven't worked a ton at all. And they're just, you know, nervous and excited and anxious about getting started. Um, you know, and they're, they're looking for mentorship. That's what veterinary grads are looking for. They, um, they know a lot and a lot of them don't know what they know yet. And they need someone there to tell them, yeah, you're doing it right. Or otherwise, if that's the case, but, um, in a lot of cases they, they know what they're doing. They just need somebody there to sort of help them get to that level where they're confident. Definitely. And, and that's the big thing if you're, you know, again, if you're trying to attract new grads, um, mentorship, um, you know, and a lot of places offer that. And I think um, it's something that you've really got to follow through on. You've got to really genuinely offer that mentorship. And um, So th- that's, that's a super helpful insight. Um, and I, I think that that totally makes a lot of sense. Um, just, you know, the, the fear of probably making the wrong mistake when it's like a life and death situation that they're afraid they're not going to be able to handle or, you know, like a million different types sure. of fears that they can be, they can be facing. Um, and so, you know, when you're, when you're out there um, creating conversations and contacts and relationships with, with people that are going to be potential hires for you, what, what are the social networks that you're kind of thinking about most? And, um, you know, me and you met on LinkedIn and I think LinkedIn is pretty amazing. It's getting more and more popular, more and more traction. Better. Yeah, it's definitely getting better. Um, as far as the veterinary industry goes, there are some industries that have always been on LinkedIn, you know, and there are certain types of folks that have always been on there. Vets have not really been that demographic, honestly, in the past. And that's changing and I hope it continues to change because I think it's a great platform uh, for connecting, you know, for business and, uh, of all kinds. But uh, Facebook is, uh, is huge. Everybody's got a Facebook page, you know, but the trick is, again, you can't, you know, you can't just bully your way in there. So, you know, advertising um, through the Facebook advertising platforms is big. That's something we do, of course. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's one of the things while you're, while you're planning your company's branding strategy, um, you want to make sure that you're thinking about employer branding as well. And, and all these things like what do, what do we look like, not just for customers and potential clients, but what do we look like for um, people in the industry? Definitely. Definitely. Um, and I'm, I'm seeing like a lot more uh, vet students, specifically vet students and newer grads with their Instagram um, like there seems like they're creating well, yeah. amazing content on there too. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I forgot what, <laughs> what your, your question, but yeah, uh, Facebook and Instagram, obviously, um, you know, and Twitter as well. I, you know, I think they're all, the thing is it's all of them. You yeah, for sure. Really be hitting all of them because everybody sort of has their, their thing. I have a, a really good friend who sees never on Facebook anymore and, 
Yeah. And he's always on Instagram and I use Instagram less than he's so. I, I'm in the same boat. My wife uses Instagram like crazy and I never, I mean, I am on there sometimes, but Facebook's my primary because I'm running ads on there all the time. And right. so it's just, it's, it's super interesting. But, um, you know, I, I think that that pro- LinkedIn probably is one of the weakest social networks for, you know, veterinarians and vet practices in general. And I think that it's an amazing platform. Um, do you see that kind of being the, the future go-to place for hiring? Or do you think that it's going to not necessarily. It's definitely a go-to place for hiring for a lot of industries already. Mm-hmm. Uh, it hasn't, like I said, it hasn't been for the veterinary industry uh, because vets, uh, vets have a, a profile. They may have a profile, but they never look at it. In my experience, that's, that's what it's been. That's changing a little bit. It's uh, more vets are spending time on LinkedIn and I'm seeing that they're actually active on there and I'm connecting with people and have hired some people that way as, as well. So it's getting better. So yes, I think it's going to continue to get better. Um, I also think that it's an open playing field for anybody that wants to create um, community online. You know, I think that there's a, there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, No matter what industry you're in, if you're in the veterinary industry, great, but uh, whatever it is that you do, um, creating a place where people can go and network where it's really easy to connect and, free, <laughs> you know, yeah. I think is also uh, something that, that can and probably will happen. If anybody's out there, that's uh, a better programmer than me. Let's make it happen. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, but I think definitely um, platforms like LinkedIn are uh, fantastic places where they're coming together, not to post pictures of cats specifically, <laughs> unless it's a cat, you know, on the table. Yep. <laughs> in this industry it makes sense yeah it's totally of cats, but um you know people who are coming on there to network um and i think there's opportunities for linkedin to get better and for new ones to come along definitely 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 um so if if you are talking to let's say uh vet students or new grads that are coming out um because i know i know that we have quite a few that are, that listen to the podcast and that are, you know, vet students and things. Um, How, how do you suggest they kind of present themselves? Do you think that they should be building personal brands that kind of like get their, get their name out there, get their kind of skill set out there and their, their presence out there? Or do you think that they should, you know, typically have a a more reserved um, kind of presence that's more personal um, I think you got to just be authentic to yourself. You know, some people are pure introverts and they're really not meant to make a video and put it out out there. Um, and that's fine. You know, you don't have to do that. I, I think you just have to be true to yourself. Um, I think, you know, you've got to also understand that you have to build community somehow, you know, you've got to make sure that you are putting yourself out there and, and, communicating with your clients and building community and all of that stuff. But um, as far as presenting themselves right out of school for, for a job, I think the most, the most important thing to remember if I was giving anybody advice going into a job interview of any kind is just to relax and be yourself. Definitely. It's the most, it's the most important thing. Um, Coming right out of school, you're all in the same boat. Totally. You know, as far as what, where you've been, and et cetera, at least the people at the same schools are all in the same boat. There's plenty of need for you. Um, they need you. Uh, practices need you. Companies need you. So um, know that and just be confident that you have a lot of opportunity and um, make sure you gather enough information. Um, I mean, ultimately, that's what I tell people my job is, is to make sure that they have enough information to make a decision on whether or not to take a job. Definitely. So anyway, I could ramble on forever about yeah, that. That's what <laughs> like, like, I think, yeah. If, if you're, if you're trying to be somebody you're, you're not, or you're trying to probably sell that, you know, too much, um, you're, you're going to you know, put yourself in a, a bad spot just because it's not, not going to work out for you. You'll right. attract the wrong kind of people and the wrong kind of, uh, opportunity for you that you're not going to be happy in and everyone's situation is so different you know some people specifically want to go into laboratory medicine um and that's what they want to do some people want to go into large animal 
uh, or you know herd medicine, and that's what they want to do. And other people want to be small animal GP practitioners and work with cats and dogs, and yeah, that's what they want to do. Other people want to work with exotics. So um, you know, I mean, everybody's career path is 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 different based on what they want. And so, first of all, you know, focus on that and feel feel comfortable. There's plenty of room for you. And then again, relax and be yourself. Yeah, and, totally. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense. Well, I, I really appreciate your time. Tell everybody where to go so that they can apply to work for your company with you. And I really appreciate that. Uh, it's uh, Well, you go to uh, vettedpetcare.com and check us out. Uh, you can also email me uh, at jesse.thomason at vettedpetcare.com. That's J-E-S-S-E dot T-H-O-M as in Mary, A-S-O-N as in Nancy at vetted, V-E-T-T-E-D, petcare.com. Awesome. And what kind of vets are you looking for? Are vets or techs or who who do you look for? Everybody? Right now, right now we're in Los Angeles, San Francisco, uh, New York, D.C., and Atlanta, and growing. And uh, we're looking for veterinarians. Uh, right now, our ideal a candidate would be somebody that maybe has done house calls before. I mean, that's ideal. But ultimately, I'm interested in talking to any veterinarian that is interested in talking to us and learning more about in-home medicine. Perfect. How and how we set that up. We tend to hire vets on a contract basis, so we can kind of work with you on any schedule, uh, which, again, goes back to the flexibility that we're talking about. So we're really flexible um, and fun place to uh, come and make extra money. So we hire techs on a full-time basis. So we have full-time opportunities with benefits uh, for technicians. Awesome. (laughs) Lots of different things going on. We're growing. We've been around for three years now. So um, there's a lot happening. and uh, Expect to see more in the future. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Jesse. I really appreciate it. And um, we'll talk again sometime soon, but appreciate you being on the podcast. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you need anything, please be sure to reach out. I hope that uh, you be sure to leave an honest review in iTunes or Google Play. And please, if you need help with anything, don't forget, reach out and have a fantastic week. I'll see you on the next episode. All right, bye.